Now, okay, accumulator. Accumulator's job is to accumulate any liquid that by mistake was released out of the evaporator and is going back to the compressor. It's a passive device. It's a safety device. It normally sits there and does nothing. It does nothing. Gas flows in, gas goes out. It's never used unless there's a mistake. And then its job is to catch the liquid and protect the compressor. You cannot compress liquid. Okay, we're still pretty good? Alrighty. Now, we go back down where our two evaporators tee back together. And on our way back, we probably will run into a suction filter. The suction filter's job is to remove acids and solid particulate matter. The acids are hydrochloric, hydrofluoric, and nitric. And like I've said before, I am sure there's a whole bunch more acids I don't even know about with the new refrigerants. Okay, now they're the last valve that's on there. It's going to be a little hard for me to explain to you guys. Some people leave it out. I'll do my best explanation. You're welcome to read the book. I'm used to calling it a CPR, Compressor Pressure Regulator. What does the book call it? Low side pressure control. Low side pressure control. Okay. The job of that valve is to maintain a constant pressure to the compressor. Now, we haven't got into compressors yet, but you should know that the difference between the suction pressure in pounds per square inch and the discharge pressure in pounds per square inch is the compression ratio. Okay? Not only do we determine how many cubic inches or feet of gas we move, but we also have to calculate the compression ratio. We do not want the compression ratio to, stand, to change every time the EPR valve opens up. We don't want the EPR valve to mess with the compression ratio of the compressor. So the compressor pressure regulator valve, or the whatever they call its job, is to make sure the compressor sees a constant happy gas pressure, which enhances efficiency of the system. Now, you're going to wonder, well, what difference does that make? Now we have to go back and add on additional parts. And you'll understand why the CPR valve is so important. All right. Liquid desuperheater. Yeah. If you look on the high side, there is a valve called a liquid desuperheater. When system situations occur and the system is running too hot, Remember, we deal, and we count on our compressor to cool itself with cool gases coming back. Cool gas and cool oil makes our compressor engine, motor, not engine, motor, work properly. So, sometimes things go bad, and the low side system gets too hot. The temperatures get too hot. So we have a computerized sensor that says, oh my gosh, the low side pressure is too hot. The compressor is not getting a cool enough vapor and pop! The liquid desuperheat valve will open, sending a cooling fog of moisture droplets back toward the compressor. Now, I say a fog. The valve has a limiting orifice inside of it that puts out a spray. It does not send liquid in the line. It puts out a spray of droplets. This cooling fog runs back and cools the compressor motor. Liquid desuperheater. The hot gas defrost solenoid valve. The hot gas solenoid valve takes hot gas after the oil separator, before the condenser, and sends that hot gas up and into the frozen evaporator. And this will cause a defrost. The hot gas goes in and it warms up the ice. The ice melts and we defrost that evaporator. Generally we'll have hot gas two or three times a day for about 20 minutes every eight hours. Now it's going to vary from system to system, 
but this is just to give you a feel. You'll have a hot gas defrost about 20 minutes every 8 hours. Now, the hot gas pours into that evaporator after the refrigerant control. This hot gas is what kind of pressure? It's pretty high pressure, isn't it? And after that hot gas goes through the evaporator, where does it go? Right back to the compressor. And we have this higher pressure gas slamming into the compressor? No, we don't. Because we have a CPR valve to protect the compressor. It protects the compressor, maintains a standard compression ratio. So when we go into defrost, we don't have this pressure gas coming back and slamming into our compressor, do we? And the accumulator is super important during defrost because some of this hot gas might be condensed into liquid droplets and the accumulator will catch those droplets. So that's why you're going to have an accumulator on a hot gas defrost system because you may have some of that gas turned into liquid droplets and you don't want it to go back to the compressor so hot gas always has an accumulator. There is an inverted P-trap to make sure no liquid leaves the evaporator and runs down that hot gas line and we don't have any hot gas line that has liquid stuck in it. There's an inverted P-trap on the top. That's a plumbing device. It's a loop, an overpass, to make sure we don't have any liquid go back down that hot gas line. Right there. A little inverted, little inverted trap, and it makes sure no liquid can get back because it comes in deliberately on top of the tubing, so no liquid can go back when we're normally operating. <clears throat> so if you decide to draw the hot gas, make sure you put that P-trap on. It. But wait a minute, it's zero degrees outside. It's so cold. It's so cold outside, I can't keep the pressures up. That's okay, because you have a hot gas bypass valve. The hot gas bypass valve will automatically bypass hot gas from the high side into the low side of the system to maintain a proper low side operating pressure. The hot gas bypass valve will bypass hot gas into the low side if the low side pressure gets too low. Very important valve. You'll see that five times in a lifetime. Now, there is another part not shown in the diagram, but you're welcome to use it. It's called a heat exchanger. You remember what the heat exchanger, where it's at? It takes a high pressure liquid and it wraps the liquid line around the suction line and cools the high pressure liquid to increase efficiency. Also, it would help evaporate any liquid droplets going back to the compressor. Now, in your refrigerator at home, you have a heat exchanger. It's probably not what you're thinking about, though. What they do is they'll actually take the capillary tube, they'll drill a hole in the suction line, and they'll put the capillary tube inside the suction line and run it all the way up to the evaporator inside the suction line. And then it, right at the evaporator, it separates, so the cooling gases come back and they go around the capillary tube all the way down the suction line and the way back to the compressor. And that is our heat exchanger. Or, in the old days, they take the capillary tube and using soft solder, they'd solder it to the suction line all the way back. So a heat exchanger is an efficiency device. It makes the system more efficient. It takes the liquid line and cools it down by using returning suction gas to increase efficiency.